Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to um, the European Higher Education Fair virtual uh, exhibition and talk show. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, good afternoon to everybody joining us. And it just so happens that our speakers are also on Indonesian time. So good afternoon to you as well. And welcome. And thank you for joining us. Um, I would first and foremost like to introduce myself. My name is Dila Haju, and I will be your moderator for this session. Before we begin, I would like to kindly remind um, everyone that this exhibition will commence until 6 p.m. So do make sure you check out all the virtual booths. And um, this is our uh, last talk show for the day. Um, we will try to cover as many topics and questions um, within this limited time. Um, feel free to write down your questions in the comment and chat box, and we will have a Q&A session after the talk show um, to get to your questions. But uh, do not fret if we are not able to answer them here. Um, the virtual booths will still be available until 6 p.m. And uh, at the end of the, um, the session, uh, I will also share the websites of each university so that you can take up all of your questions or concerns there. And I'm, um, from the previous sessions, um, all of the representatives of the universities have been more than helpful. So do not fret. But thank you for joining us. So we will dive into this session's topic, which is uh, Master in International Business in France. It's a, very, it's a very strong topic. I am interested to see how this will um, unravel. So we have with us two representatives from two universities, um, starting from ESCA. Uh, ESCA School of Management um, is in several cities here, uh, Angers, Paris, Lyon, Bordeaux, I hope I pronounced that right. I send province, Strasbourg, and it is a private university. And we also have with us from ESC Clermont a Business School. And the city of Clermont-Ferrand is also a private uh, university. So I will now introduce our speakers one by one. We will start with um, the representative from ESCA School of Management, Ms. Li Ching Chen, um, who is the head of promotions at ESCA. You can say hi. Sorry, you're still muted. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. Hi. Uh, hello. So I'm Li Qingchen uh, from ESCA uh, Shanghai campus, actually. I'm based in Shanghai and in charge of the recruitment of students in Asia. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. to Mr. Muhammad El Zayadi, uh, representative of the ESC Clermont Business School, who is the recruitment manager for international students. Can you say hi. Hello, Dira. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation to join this talk show. I'm really excited for it. And yeah, my name is Mohamed Rizadi, in charge of promotion and uh, as well as admissions for ESC Clermont, Clermont Business School. And we're really happy to be assisting today in this uh, talk show. Okay. Thank you so very much. Uh, I myself am very uh, interested to see. Uh, we already have several questions here. Once again, I would like to remind though to all the participants that if you do have any questions, do um, write them in the chat box and the comment box and we will uh, do our best to make sure that they are answered. So we will start with our first question. I think this is a question for both universities. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the uniqueness compared, what is your uniqueness compared to other business schools in Europe? So I think what they mean by uniqueness, though, it could it could mean a lot of things. It could be either the majors, could be the culture of of the school, um, could be history. Um, so feel okay. free to answer. Maybe we can start with Miss Leeching. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Uh, so I think uh, ESCA is a very special school. We were established uh, in 99, so more than 100 years ago, very old school. Ah. And uh, we are well, actually we are registered as an NGO, so um, no profit association. And, uh, um, and uh, our school uh, starting from all shape, but today we have already spread it ourselves uh, a little bit over in France. So you, could, you have seen that we were in six cities in France and actually Actually, Angers is a city very, not very far from Paris, but today mm -hmm. uh, our Paris campus and Lyon campus are even more popular than Angers. And, and also we have uh, two campus, overseas campus in Budapest and in Shanghai. Um, and uh, next year we will 
or open another new uh, overseas campus in Spain, in Malaga, very nice mm. city too. So um, I think it's already quite unique that we are offering courses over uh, in so many cities uh, in France and uh, also in our overseas campuses. And uh, also uh, ESCA has a very good uh, ambience, uh, very famous for that. So ESCA, at ESCA, actually, uh, we really um, attach importance also to sustainability, which is a very important uh, uh, element in our school, like we implement it into a daily school operation. And also we excel in the uh, sustainability sustain, uh, sustainability management uh, research. We are ranked the number eight uh, in the world in terms of the, uh, the public, uh, the, the publish uh, in this field by Financial Times. So I think all these uh, um, is quite unique at uh, ESCA. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. And to uh, Mr. Mohammed. Yes, uh, so briefly speaking, yeah, what are the, let's say, uh, the differentiation points for our business school? So we are a business school that is very international. We have almost 40% of our student population that is coming from abroad. Mm. And this number is growing as the years go by. Yeah. So it shows, you know, the importance that the student, that this, the importance that the business school uh, places on the welcoming of international students, their integration and so on. Uh, so that's the first point. Also, we have faculty coming from abroad. A lot of the faculty members are coming from abroad. So, you know, this highly international atmosphere from day one, that's one point. Secondly, the personalized, <coughs> sorry, uh, the personalized approach because we are a medium-sized school. We are talking about almost 1,900 students. We have a very good ratio of professors to students, you know, all the mm. students are uh, regularly supervised and coached by our professors, by our faculty, and it's easy to establish a personal link with them. They're not just, you know, uh, a number amongst thousands and thousands of students. So we are engaged to accompany the students from uh, before they arrive, during their stay, their academic and professional stay, and even after they finish their degree. So this kind of human approach that we are very proud to promote. So those are, let's say, the two main uh, highlights that um, our students say they appreciate the most. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed. Um, it's it's a good thing that you mentioned about um, the uh, ratio. Or you did mention about par uh, professors and students as well, and and how you have this uh, human approach. Because our next question is. Um, how does your business school work with professional partners? So I think when they talk about professional partners, it could be either corporate, it could be other universities, perhaps. Um, it could even be government uh, or even uh, organizations as well. So I think this is also an interesting pop, um, topic. Perhaps we can start with you, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, yeah, so in terms, in terms of the academic, uh, let's say the academic world, we have a partnership with more than 130 different partner universities, perhaps uh, the most relevant <clears throat> In our case today, it's going to be the University of Gajah Mada in Yogyakarta, which uh. is partners, one of the strategic partners of the school. But we have partners also all over the globe, you see in the States, Germany, and so on. So this allows for the students to benefit from student mobility programs, and even in some cases, obtain a double degree. So one degree from France and one degree mm. from abroad. So that is the academic side. The professional side, we have partnership with um, more than 500 different companies. Mm. Those are um, varied between uh, startups, small and medium enterprises, and multinational companies. So they trust our degrees. They trust our graduates. They are always seeking to hire our grads. And we have, of course, a lot of uh, collaboration with those uh, companies in order to see what are also the domains that are in need, what are the soft skills that the students need to obtain in order you know, to integrate the job market in the most efficient way. So we work very closely with this academic and professional networks. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Ms. Li Ching, would you like to um, add on? Yes. Yeah. So um, actually, we work with our corporate partners at uh, uh, different levels. So uh, mm -hmm. because we are school of management, and yeah. very often it's the case for other schools, I think, in France. Uh, 
uh, all our courses are very operational oriented because mm -hmm. operational oriented because uh, our goal is really to educate uh, young managers uh, for companies. So we are working with our corporate partners uh, really in a lot of ways. Like uh, um, we can uh, we work with them for a student's job and internship opportunities. Of course, that's something that uh, students really uh, attach uh, high importance. And uh, um, they uh, so we work with them on this and also uh, we work with them on the daily uh, courses like uh, uh, companies they uh, they uh, their uh, executives will come to our classes to share their expertise mm -hmm. and also uh, we organize company visitors and also we have like uh, uh, in some pro uh, programs we have uh, projects that we work with companies our students will deliver projects um, uh, for companies and sometimes also, uh, also we have of course every year career days where company will come directly to present themselves, meet our students directly. So we really uh, cooperate with uh, uh, companies in a lot of ways. And today we have we are working with more than 2,500 com companies. Uh, some of them are really big and international companies. And also many of them are very active. Uh, we call SMEs, small and medium-sized companies. So that's for the company level. Mm -hmm. And also we are doing a lot of uh, exchange programs with our mm -hmm. academic partners. Uh, today Today we have 279 uh, university partners in 55 mm. countries. So our students actually the goal is also to uh, let our students to have very international exposure, um, mm. so they can uh, choose a, a, a country that they like to go to experience another culture, uh, a new a new country, new new life. So uh, we encourage our students to do so. And uh, uh, yeah, that's for the uh, academic partner. So I think uh, in both ways, our corporate and again, academic partners, we are very, uh, we, we work with them very closely and try to provide our students a lot of uh, experience in, in professional way and in academic way. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, both uh, representatives did mention about the uh, working with the international universities as well, a number of universities. This, I think, um, not just on the university side, but, but the professional partners. This next question is about um, where do your students usually go after their studies? Do they launch a venture or work for specific industries, etc.? I think it would be good if, if you could provide concrete um, examples, because a uh, session before was also talking about business schools in France, where there was a university that didn't necessarily did not limit themselves, but they did specialize in uh, the aerospace industry. Mm. Uh, so I think this is is interesting. So having to to be more specific doesn't necessarily mean you narrow yourself, but maybe perhaps if if you could give insight on um, where your university somewhat is in majority or specializes would be would be great or a specific example. Mm. So maybe we can start with um Ms. Luching. Okay, uh, yes. so actually, um, I should say that uh, um, our students, they can work in, lo in a lot of domains, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, the main sectors uh, we, where uh, our students will work, uh, it's mainly uh, finance, 34%, or okay. uh, marketing, 27%. Okay. Or um, business development, uh, sales, uh, sales management, eighteen percent, and also nine percent for consultancy, and also seven mm -hmm. percent of them will launch their own company, and the five percent will go to the human resources sector. So, mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, uh, these, these numbers also um, represent a lot of opportunities because, mm. for example, 20% of students will go to uh, marketing industry. But in fact, in the marketing industry, you have a lot of uh, um, different kinds of positions. Companies. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do like a luxury marketing or uh, uh, marketing, uh, consumer goods marketing, service marketing. In terms of position, it can be like a brand management, web marketing, mm. digital marketing, event management, etc. So all these like in this big marketing family you can have uh, like thousands of different positions so uh, our students they can really uh, they really have possibilities to work in 
you know, uh, in like big companies uh, occupying that kind of position, but also in small companies. So that's a very, um, yeah, that's just uh, uh, many, many opportunities. And same for, for, for finance, like they can work for financial institution, for banks, yeah. but also uh, in the financial departments and for, uh, for, for companies. Um, yeah, so that's where they will work. And if they are, uh, they, if, uh, of course, if they are in uh, more specific programs, like for example, we have a luxury marketing program them. So our students uh, uh, now, um, they are, most of them, they will work in big uh, luxury companies like uh, LBMH, like Chanel, like Celine, uh, like uh, uh, Louis Vuitton, etc. And um, mm. Uh, and uh, for in terms of position, they would uh, mostly occupy marketing position because uh, they are specialized in this field. So uh, it just sometimes depends on the uh, specific yes. major they would choose. Also, so right? They will yes. look for the open their career in that in that way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Miss Liqing. Mm -hmm. uh, on to uh, Mr. Mohammed, perhaps you'd like to add on to that. So uh, yes. actually, we have a wide. Uh, we uh, we have a wide and broad uh, course offers. So you see, we offer the classical, let's say business disciplines such as marketing, finance, accounting, and so on. And also we offer, uh, let's say innovative um, based specializations such as FinTech, financial technologies, such as business intelligence and mm -hmm. data analytics, you know, domains that are uh, booming right now, digital marketing as well. And we also offer, uh, courses that that, that are, say that are adapted to a certain uh, student population. For example, we have a sport management track. Mm. We have agreements with sports clubs, with sport-based. Ah, uh, sports-based. Such okay. as Deca Decathlon, which is already existing over here when I was discussing uh. the integration. <laughs> okay. So they're already familiar with some of the brands. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So we have a, a wide variety of um, options when it comes to the courses and so that means also that the candidates that are interested in the banking sector, mm -hmm. we will be able to orient them to our partner banks in the, and they will follow so the FinTech uh, track. If they're interested in marketing, then we have definitely partnership with companies that are focusing on the marketing side with uh, consulting companies. So we are working with Capgemini, with a Michelin, the car tire company, because the headquarters is our, our city. So mm. Plasterian, IT company. So you see, it depends on the major that they're going to choose yeah. and the industry that they want to integrate, we will be able to guide them appropriately and so to put them in touch with uh, those companies. There is also an, a completely different track, which is the entrepreneurship track. So for some mm -hmm. of the students that want to launch their own company, that's very much relevant. We have a certain uh, percent of the student population which decides to start their own activity. Mm -hmm. We have an incubator that provides them with all the tools, knowledge, support, uh, and mentoring that is needed in order you know, to build their business, which is usually involving some technology because we know that now startups are mainly tech focused so yeah so we provide them with the main platform that you know help them get their business on its first steps and even to grow more and more okay thank you um as an add-on question so um yes they were talking about where they would usually go career path wise but there is a question on internships mm. um and furthermore uh there's also a question of if any assistance or help from uh, from campus is given for international students who have difficulty finding an offer. This topic came up in, in the sessions before. Um, there was talk of how, yes, the universities will help, but the students have to be proactive themselves too. <laughs> they have to know yes. where they want to go. Yes, I, that's a given too. But um, I guess, uh, but yes, maybe you would like to shine some light on this um, regarding the internships, how, how open are they? And um, are they difficult to to join or, or et cetera? If, if there's any information that you can give, I think it would be helpful. Maybe we can start from uh, Mr. Mohammed. Yeah, so you see, I've been working for ESC Climo for a couple of years already, almost six years. So I've seen, you see hundreds of profiles of international students and I've seen the evolution of, you know, of the students, whether they were able to get permanent job in France if they wish mm -hmm. to stay, and also, I can tell you that the majority of our students, the great majority of our students that wanted to stay in France and that did the effort which is necessary, <laughs> they were definitely able to do it. And uh, I'm one of those few you know, international students because I am originally from Egypt, from Cairo. 
Mm-hmm. So I went to France. I've, I did my master's in the same business school uh, in 2015. And since then, I've been working and I've seen so many other examples, people that are settled or students that are settled in Paris, Marseille, Nice, all over France, or even sometimes, you know, they decide to go to other European countries. Mm-hmm. Mainly those who don't want to speak French and to learn it, they go to Germany, Luxembourg, mm-hmm. They go to other destinations, let's say, where English is more popular. Mm. But uh, yeah, so uh, like you said, an important point is that it's not spoon, uh, it's not spoon feeding. We won't come and be like, please sign for this. Job. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, no. It doesn't work this way, obviously. But yeah, we provide them with all the tools, with all the guidance, with all the preparation, with the networking, also some of the professors, mm-hmm. so they put them into direct contact with the companies, the companies that come on campus for recruitment, mm-hmm. but they are supposed to be there. First of mm-hmm. all, they're supposed to work in their CVs. They're supposed to also learn a bit of French. Okay. Not necessarily be fluent in French, but it's, you know, like me, if I want to one day work in Indonesia, I'll have to learn the language. Otherwise, yes, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, very yeah. complicated to settle. Yeah, but yeah, so there is no struggle. The French economy is doing very well also. So, you know, it's not like other economies that, let's say, that are uh, passing through a difficult time. So it's relatively easy to find a job as long as um, the people, the students, they do the effort. And their visa also allows them to, to do so. Since we are an accredited okay. institution, they can stay after their studies and permanently uh, okay. work over there. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah. Ms. Lichin, you uh, may add on? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with Mohammed. So um, we, uh, I think that's uh, uh, very common in each uh, School of Management in France, we all have our career center. So the, the goal of the career center is really to help students uh, to um, to help them to be connected with companies. And of course, just like you said, it's up to students, you know, to fully use uh, the um, all the resources provided by the school and uh, yeah. really. Um, really try to grab at all the opportunities and uh, um, as I experienced so I can see that uh, um, of course if you speak French it will be much it easier will, much to helpful, find the internship yeah. in, in yeah. France yeah. Um, but today nowadays there you have also some uh, job uh, positions open to international students with big companies so they are seeking for international talents and so uh, as far as I, I because I just came back from France and I chatted with uh, our graduates uh, from digital and big data for example uh, last year, they all found job. They they are all international students, but they uh, found job like uh, in uh, in Nissan, in uh, in uh, Amazon. So as a uh, mm. digital analyst, and so that that might have some um, opportunities. And as Mohammed said, st- uh, once you student, once the students they go to France, they open their international career opportunities. So mm. not just stay in France, but they can also. T- go to other European com- uh, com- countries or even go to this, the United States or come to uh, mm. other uh, you know, countries in, in, uh, in Asia. Uh, for example, I have students uh, who enter like HSBC and then be sent mm. by HSBC to, uh, to their uh, Guangzhou uh, branch. And also uh. Uh, students go, uh, went to Bosch and uh, to, to Germany and then uh, sent back by, Germany to Asia, uh, by Bosch to Asia too. So you have this kind of opportunities. Um, yeah. So so I think that the most important thing still uh, for students is really to be active and uh, and really uh, fully use all the resources. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Li Ching. Um, we have, oh, I would, uh, before I, I move on to our, our next questions for the talk show, again, we are, um, we invite more questions to add on more questions um, for our Q&A session. Mm-hmm. So that because uh, we have three more for our talk show, we already have several coming in, but mm-hmm. we are waiting for more. Just um, type it in the comment and chat box. Chat, chat box. We'll be waiting. Um, okay, so I will go back to the talk show uh, and our next question. Um, I think it, it was partially answered already before. Um, this question um, is: Do you have any assistance? Uh, for your alumni, especially for non-EU students to enter the professional or job market in Europe. I think this is for students who are who who are looking for a career path in Europe. Mm. I think internationally too, but but uh, maybe specifically, I think if, if they're interested to study in Europe and and work in Europe as well, um, this is a specific question for your alumni and for non-EU EU citizens, students. Mm. Um, maybe you could start uh, with this question, Ms. Leiching. 
Okay, uh, so just as Mohammed has already um, mentioned, uh, students with a master degree can uh, stay in France for an extra year mm. if after graduation they haven't found a job yet. So it's already a possibility for them, you know, to continue to uh, look for a, a yeah. job in, in, in France. And of course, uh, um, we, uh, our uh, career center will continue to support them. They can still, you know, uh, find all the job offers and, and uh, on our uh, on our intranet and the different channels. And uh, you talked about alumni, and actually, uh, our yeah. students will ent will enter into alumni association automatically after they are uh, graduated. So, of course, they can. Uh, they are free. Uh, they, they are they are invited to participate in uh, different uh, activities organized regularly by uh, alumni association uh, mm -hmm. which is our association is a very active one in yeah. france they really organize a lot of uh, um, activities uh, uh, like uh, regularly and also we have uh, for this system called the uh, uh, embassy system we have uh, uh, alumni embassy in more than 40 countries uh, they are there to, uh, ready to help our alumni if they uh, go abroad, you know, to a new country and really uh, want to figure out how to fit in the local culture. And uh, mm. uh, so they are there to help. And yeah, so th those are uh, resources that uh, we uh, we have. prepare, you know, to help our uh, uh, graduates, uh, even if they are graduated, we hope that they can, uh, we can still, uh, you know, accompany them for their lifelong time through the alumni association. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, would you like to add on to that, Mr. Mohammed? So the approach is quite similar. We definitely have so an alumni network as well that facilitates, you know, the exchanges. And like Li Ching said, so in that case, we build, the, you know, the network, we build the connection between our recent graduates and our alumni who are already working and, you know, yeah. who are more familiar with uh, the job landscape in France or abroad. So we have the network that um, has a membership of almost 13,000 graduates of the business school. So you see it's, it's a huge network. Mm. And also when we, uh, when we do, uh, let's say, on-site visits, such as this time, we take the chance to meet with the graduates also and uh, to, to have them engaged you know, with our recent grads so that they can provide them with coaching, with advice, with you know, perks on how to uh, settle either in France or to go to another uh, destination. So it's common, for example, when the students, they start also searching for opportunities and they see on LinkedIn that this same company is already, you know, having some of the employees that are graduates of the same school. So they are able to get in touch with those uh, grads. And, you know, uh, this facilitates somehow the job hunting. Yeah, 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 A couple of days yeah. ago, I was um, contacted by one of our uh, German graduates who sent me a message out of nowhere. You know, we were not even seeking for it. And he told me that his company is seeking to hire for different open positions. So he requested me to put him in touch with the corporate relations department of the school so that we could promote for those opportunities. And of course, when the company is happy to see the quality of the grads that are coming, they're more than eager, and it's happened in the past many times before, to build an agreement, to, work, to craft an agreement with the business school in order to welcome even more graduates coming from the same school. Thank you. Um, this next question is is also again I think an add on um, because and there was a, I, I heard there was a mention of incubation uh, programs. Um, this question is what resources does the school offer to help students launch ventures? I think it was it was mentioned before the alumni networks, um, working with professional partners, uh, all that, and um, and the business incubator programs as well. Um, both, both have that, but maybe per perhaps the questions before we're talking about job offers, about career paths, but this is, I think, for on a more on entrepreneur um, mm. path. Mm. So maybe perhaps there could be a little more explanation on how mm. the school uh, offers to help students in, in that way if for those who want to launch their own ventures. Maybe we can, uh, again, start with Ms. Lu Ching. Mm, okay, so uh, at ESCA, uh, in Paris, we have uh, an uh, incubator, uh, like... Uh, so, yes, yeah, as you mentioned before, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if students, they want to 
really launch their business, so they can apply to enter into the incubator. So in the incubator, they will have mentors, mentors from companies. They will help students to polish their business plan and yeah. to give them necessary guidance and teach them how to raise funds, etc. And also each year we have competition of the um, uh, of the projects in the uh, in incubator. If uh, uh, if some you know uh, really good and the mature uh, projects that uh, like uh, uh, won the prize and. And, uh, they can get uh, they can get money they can get funds uh, from yeah. The, yeah, uh, from the school and the, uh, from the foundation so they can really uh, kick off uh, uh, with uh, some real support real financial support too and um, yeah so uh, in uh, so they can have a mentor they can have some kind of a mentor uh, guidance and also uh, real uh, financial support to from get to get real, real funds yes yeah yeah okay wonderful thank you uh, would you like to add on miss uh, mr Mohammed uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it's a very similar approach. Uh, you see, uh, there are um, certain, let's say, uh, juries that take place over various times uh, during the year, where we get, you know, the stake, the important stakeholders, coaches, banks, uh, investment um, companies, they come and they see the projects of the students in order, you know, to support uh, those startups that are most pro promising, let's say. So that is one thing. And in terms of the academics, we have um, a startup uh, challenge yep. uh, for the master programs in particular, where for three day days, it's like a hackathon. They work, you know, in a, uh, on the concept of a company uh, from scratch. Within 72 hours, they need to deliver a result. And the same uh, concept is there. The most promising projects are to be uh, financed partially by the school and partially by mm. some of our uh, main partners. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, our last uh, question for uh, this talk show, right before we go into our Q&A, um, is how are your MBA programs different from your MSc, Master of Science, I believe, in uh, business programs? Maybe we can start with uh, Mr. Mohammed. So the Master in Management program, you see, it's a broad course. It allows students in the first year to get exposure to different uh, business disciplines. Yeah. So to gain insights into marketing, finance, uh, accounting, economics, uh, you know, a broad, let's say, approach in year one. Yeah. And then see what field they're most passionate about and they're yeah. uh, most likely going Interesting, to Interesting, yeah? yeah. Exactly. So the idea is to become a general manager but also mm -hmm. an expert in one area at a time. So in year uh, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. they start their specialization either in marketing or finance or business intelligence or supply chain. Mm -hmm. There are lots of options or entrepreneurship, for example, it's one of the specializations in year two. So that is one orientation that is there. Mm -hmm. Second orientation is to go for a specialized master's or what we call the master of science programs. So in that case, it means that the students are looking for an accelerated track because the duration is only for one year. And then they start working and not two years. And they focus mainly on one specialization. So they will do business intelligence and all the courses will be somehow related to this discipline. So there is business intelligence or project management or corporate finance and fintech or supply chain or smart mobility. I hope I didn't forget anything, but mainly- <laughs> I mean, And they can visit the virtual booth. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this, this, that is the, you know, the, the different- Differentiation, okay. The master in management also, since it's for two years, there is more flexibility. So they can take a gap year to work. They can um, they can travel abroad, you know, through the exchange program. They could do an apprenticeship, a work study track in year two. There are a lot of flexibility. It's a course that they're able to personalize. However, for the specialized masters, the options are way less because they mainly focus mm. on their specialization. What's important to note is that Indonesian students, since they do the bachelor's for a minimum of four years, yeah. Yeah. they have the, the they have the choice between this program or the other one. They're eligible for both of them. Okay, thank you, Sir Mohammed. Uh, would you like to add on, Miss Liching, perhaps? Uh, yeah, for us, the two-year master in management and the MSc, the difference is almost the same. Same, yeah, 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 yeah. Has mentioned, uh, but did you talk about MBA? Uh, what was the question? So, uh, how is your uh, MBA program different from your yeah. uh, MSc, Master of Science in Business program? 
Yeah, because yeah, basically we were talking about our master in management. Uh, but if the students want to know more about MBA, uh, yes, I don't know yeah, if yeah. you, uh, <laughs> yes, say Claymore, you have that. But our school, we don't have MBA program. MBA oh, so program, it's specifically master's yeah, in science. MBA okay. program is more for like uh, people with at least three years of experience. Mm. If the program is accredited by AMB Association of MBA. And also uh, it's more like most of the time it's more general management mm -hmm. uh yeah so it's different from our msc msc of course we accept uh we accept the young uh, young students just to finish their bachelor degree and mm -hmm. also with, uh, and also people with a few years of experience but they really want to be specified in uh, their, uh, in the sector like we have uh, uh, we have digital big data international finance uh, um sustainable management etc mm -hmm. so uh, i think that's uh, but we don't have mba so <laughs> okay it's, yeah. it's okay but thank you mm -hmm. uh okay so we will now close this um mm -hmm part of the talk show and we will now dive into our Q&A. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have here several uh, questions. I would like to bring in a question by Ria here, because um, um, Ms. Li Ching, uh, mm -hmm. you yourself tossed around the words of sustainability and business and, and that. And here the question is in terms like uh, climate finance and uh, carbon trading or businesses that have um, heavily deal with sustainability is that something that your um, university is is uh, doubled in perhaps maybe you can shine more light on that maybe perhaps though we can start with Mr. Mohammed on the topic uh, so if, if I understood uh, the question correctly, so how, how the school uh, valorizes sustainability, the domain of sustainability? Uh, so um, explore sustainability in business practices as part of the school curricula, uh, possible career path, and also in the school in itself as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sustainability is one of the main concerns uh, you see for uh, businesses and for um, educational institutions. Now, uh, because it's uh, it's growing, uh, it's getting more and more important, and luckily yeah. more companies are getting familiar uh, with the practice yeah. so as part of the curriculum, whether uh, on the undergrad or postgrad level. We have courses, you know, that uh, reinforce this idea of sustainability, support mm. with social responsibility, CSR yeah. courses, and you know, the the, the students they also work on. Um, let's say certain projects that are focused mainly on building a sustainable uh, model. So it's re th this module is integrated into the courses starting from the first year bachelor. So that when the students are getting exposure into the university for the first time, they know how to develop a sustainable business. They don't just think of profit making, but they also think of, you know, addressing environmental issues, climate change, global warming, all of uh, those things. So it's integrated into the different uh, business uh, disciplines, the course offer that is there on all the levels, whether the uh, undergrad or the postgrad level. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chin. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as I said, we uh, we excel in the sustainability um, research field. Yeah. So our professors, many of our professors, they really um, focus on the sustainability uh, management, and of course, they teach courses in. Uh, in this field. So in our master in management, uh, second year students can choose uh, sustainable management as one of their major, as their major. And uh, also in, we have a MSc in international and sustainable management. So, so the students mm -hmm. study. And uh, also uh, in terms of the um, uh, the school's op daily operation, we really try to implement uh, uh, this is some sustainable ma measures and work with some NGOs and also uh, in, according to our uh, long-term uh, Strategy uh, in uh, next in in this in the year to 2030s, we will we will achieve a carbon neutral. No, new, no, how you call that? Carbon no. car carbon neutral. Yeah, yeah carbon yes. neutral. So yes. that's our goal, and we are yeah. doing oh, just trying wonderful. to practice it every okay. day. So uh, yeah, it's a really very important part in our school life. Okay, thank you. Um, that is very reassuring to hear because my my personal background is in environmental education okay actually as well so that's something to mm. be yeah um very good to hear yeah that that's becoming more and more important mm. um we have a question here from salma azikia mm -hmm. um 
Well, her question is, is what, what, what is the acceptance rate for your master's program? And I feel like this changes over time as well, I think, but maybe I guess um, she is trying to see what her chances are of the possibility of me being able to, to come in. Um, I mean, because because honestly, if I look back, um, that's also something that that we want to hear. Obviously, it's not something that we should have to think about. If you want to apply, we should just apply regardless of what the acceptance rate is. But um, like perhaps for some universities, say out of 100 applicants, only 30 will be accepted. So mm -hmm. things like that. So um, I think I, is would anybody want to start <laughs> to answer the question? Maybe uh, Miss Liching, maybe. Okay, yes. um, I should say that depending on programs, it's very different. Oh, right, right, right. Because there are programs that are more popular than others, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, or, yeah or programs yeah, yeah. are bigger. For example, our uh, five-year Kahonde Gala program, like for high school students, each year we we recruit uh, one thousand students, but we have uh, like uh, between six to seven thousand uh, candidates. Oh, okay. So uh, it yeah. really depends. And for master, of course, we have less people and uh, mm -hmm, less. Mm -hmm. I should say for international students, the competition is not so severe as in. Okay. Like and, in comparison uh, to the bachelor's program, undergrad program, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and yeah, postgraduate yeah. program, I be. Uh, so I would say roughly it's like uh, uh, fifty percent or something like that, but mm. it really depends on programs. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think I think if you are a uh, student, don't be afraid of this kind of thing. Just to think about yeah, yeah. if the school is interesting for you, program is interesting for you, and if you meet the basic uh, requirements, if yes, just uh, try it. And uh, yeah, yeah, will, yeah. and also uh, feel free to contact us to give you a first evaluation. You know, mm -hmm. maybe we will tell you that this program doesn't fit you, or uh, your you or maybe your 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 curriculum is more fit for another program. So um, I. I think uh, don't don't think too much about this uh, this rate. Just uh, uh, think about the content of the programs and the school. If you like the school, and to try to contact us to check your uh, qualify if you are qualified or not. Thank you, Mr. Ching. Mr. Muhammad, would you like to add on? Yeah, I completely agree that it depends. You know, on uh, the let's say the disciplines that are pro proposed because, like, like you both mentioned, some programs are more. Um, demanded than others, and our goal is to keep uh, sticking to our values, which means we, we are seeking to have small classrooms, you know, not classrooms with so many students, because that is also one of the distinction points between yeah, yeah. Um, public and private institutions. So what I would like the candidates to focus less on is the statistics of, you know, the acceptance rate, and <laughs> focus more on is themselves, you see, working very well on their CVC, perhaps what I could respond to is what we are expecting from them. So we expect them to have a good academic background because that is obviously the most uh, relevant indicator in the beginning when they yeah, apply, yeah, yeah. but not only to focus on, you know, the grades, but as to focus on themselves as a character because mm. France, the approach is more focusing on you as well, a person, you see? Right, right, personal approach. Exactly, yeah. the soft yeah, skills, yeah. the way that you present, the way that you communicate, the way that you... Uh, work in an international group, so to prepare very well for those points, because someone who's really good in academics, but who does not have those soft skills, they will struggle in their studies abroad. Mm. So mm -hmm. academics are definitely important to take into account, but we also care about the student profile as a person and what, how motivated they are to come for the studies abroad. Thank you. Um, we have time for one last question. Um, this is a question from Anka Jagra. Uh, hello, my name is Ardana. Hi, Ardana. <laughs> um, I would like to ask about working experience. Uh, she says here, how many, she says how many hours is a three-year experience, but I don't, uh, but I think a better question would be what is to be expected? I don't, I'm not entirely sure why she's saying three-year specifically, but um, I guess it would be interesting because so, in the session before uh, there was a question about um, how how life is as a student in in France, mm -hmm. and um, and and one of the speakers shared how usually um, students fr from the international um, international students coming into France they usually hate the first year. He said this like straight up. First year they hate it, but second year, third year they love it. Like they they don't want to go home. 
So, um, <laughs> so it is, it is not an easy process usually mostly, but, um, but once you, 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 you give it more of a chance, um, it'll be a, mm. a, a wonderful and irreplaceable experience. So, but, but that was talking more on the university, perhaps maybe what, what, what she or he is trying to ask is work-wise in, in France as well, what is to be expected coming in three years or more, but, but specifically three years, I guess. Um, maybe you would like to answer Ms. Li Ching? Um, I think, yeah, actually, uh, it might be difficult indeed the first year because you don't, if you don't speak the, the uh, if you don't speak French, you enter into, of course, to, to start your courses is not a problem, but to really to fit in and uh, um, to feel like uh, be integrated, it's, uh, it's not always so obvious. So, so that's why we have have a, a kind of international desk where we have a uh, staff, we have colleagues who are uh, who are there, uh, ready to help our international students. Uh, and, uh, uh, from the beginning, we all already organized orient orientation days, and uh, uh, like uh, through some uh, uh, collective activities, we try mm -hmm. to help our students to build some, you know, um, collective. Uh, um, uh, feelings like they belong to the uh, belong to the bigger community. And uh, also we have this buddy system where uh, the French students and our international students, they can make buddies so they can, mm. they can, they can, you know, uh, really know another person really uh, well and uh, uh, try to share their different culture and the different background. That's things that uh, we are doing and try to help our students to really, um, really fit in. And also, I think my advice to international students is really uh, don't be shy and mm. try to, you know, uh, try to discuss with uh, your French colleagues or uh, other international colleagues, make friends. And uh, um, I think France is definitely a very, very interesting destination. You will be, you will be able to explore a lot of things like, uh, uh, you know, good food, good culture, and, uh, you know, <laughs> beside of the, um, the, the, the study. So, um, I think uh, uh, go there and uh, uh, with a, a open mind, you know, open attitude, and uh, try to you know embrace uh, all the things. And uh, I think it, uh, it will be just amazing. Just like as like yeah, that you yeah. said, many many students they would love to study uh, stay in France afterwards, or yeah. they really enjoy the life. And the generally for them, it's a life changing experience. Yes. So I've I've heard. <laughs> yes. Uh, would you like to add on, uh, Mr. Mohammed? I mean, I agree that the first year it's it can be you difficult. Won't <laughs> you won't necessarily hate your first year. <laughs> I don't know. That was the word that he used, but uh, yeah, uh, he no. said that like, usually it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me, you know, you know, remembering back in 2015 when I first went, well, it's like you know, I, I was coming <laughs> from an English-speaking background. You know, I didn't. Yeah, speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only know knew a bit of French. So the food is really different. The culture is really different. Everything is different. So that's why you saw, you see, I said the character is important. We are seeking, we're looking for students who are open-minded and, you know, who really want to get out of, you know, their uh, bubble and, you know, their comfy zone. And we help them through uh, what teaching said. So the body system, for example, we, we, have, we worked on uh, two months ago, for 400 plus international students. I made about a post about it recently on LinkedIn. So we invited all of them, you know, to the uh, to a sort of bar restaurant inside the, uh, in a symbolic place in the city center. And we paid, you know, for, uh, I mean, we invited them for a drink and snacks. So just, you know, a first gesture so that they can get to know each other. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah, we yeah. are feeling welcome in this new country where we yes, don't know. Yes, yes. And it worked very well. And for example, a couple of, uh, um, Days ago, we had a Diwali event, you know, to celebrate Diwali, for, for which is very important for the Indian population. Yeah. We have other events on campus that promote the different cultures in order for students to also mix together and not to stay, you know, with, within one community uh, at a time. So we we are aware about the, you know, the, the challenges, challenges <laughs> yes. that students need. And that is also the, what is um, useful in our case. In my, you see, in my, in our international team, coming from Egypt, I have a colleague from China. I have another colleague from uh, France. I have yet another colleague from Ecuador. So it's you know we are all you know together. Are, yeah. 
working together to understand the pain points for international students to make sure that they will pass a prison stay that they will only have let's say the first month which is difficult and then the rest of the duration should be fine. fine yeah okay that is very reassuring thank you so much mr mohammed and, and Ms. Liching. um we are actually time is up but i would still like uh, for you to have just a short one minute closing statement, if you will, perhaps. Uh, maybe we can start with Ms. Liching. Okay. Uh, so works. really yeah. glad, really glad to be here to share uh, some points of views with you and share information about school. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, you can, you can, you can um, try to find some more information about our school. And also, uh, yeah, I think France is really a, uh, as I said before, a really interesting destination. Uh, don't be afraid, even if you don't speak French, it's totally possible to do your study in France. And the French business schools really have a really good culture close to working with the companies and uh, um, generally has very good placement results. So um, yeah, I think uh, uh, it's time for you to explore more about the French, uh, French schools. Uh, yeah, look, just look deeper and uh, dig more information. Don't hesitate to contact us. Yeah, we will be very happy. Uh, we will be there to answer any questions about school and about programs. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mohammed. So, well, uh, finally, I'd like to really thank you, Dila, and the whole entire team for this excellent organization from day one, you know, yeah. in Jakarta, to day two thank in you. Surabaya, <laughs> to day three, you know, in the virtual uh, event over here. It was uh, really uh, an interesting experience for us to get to learn more about, you know, the Indonesian student population, what they're looking for, what their needs are. And we are eagerly um, awaiting welcoming them on our campus. So yeah, take the occasion to learn about the different programs, about the different measures that are offered. Take the chance to also connect with admissions uh, officers as in ourselves. We are extremely happy to help you out with any of your doubts, whether it's related to admissions, related to the specializations, uh, how to settle in France, you know, anything that you could think of, yeah. you can get in touch with me by email and through the number that's available also on all of our brochures, which has WhatsApp yeah. as well. So yeah, and we are really looking forward to welcoming you all to France and to meeting you once again in Indonesia next time. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for, for joining us for this session. As you have heard it yourselves, they are eagerly waiting for uh, to welcome you. So do make sure that you look into it. And uh, we still have a good 10 minutes uh, before our... Uh, the end of the uh, virtual exhibition, uh, the virtual booths are still available for the next 10 minutes. So maybe perhaps if you have any last minute inquiries, inquiries do visit. Um, and here we have um, the websites for each of the universities. So perhaps if you're just joining or um, a question was not answered, I am so sorry, uh, but you can visit their websites that are here for uh, ESCA School of Management and ESC Clamo Business School. Um, thank you once again for being with us. This you, evening, afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Ting, Mr. Muhammad, and everybody who joined. I hope to see you um, in our next sessions, and um, I hope you find what you are looking for, all the participants. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Good evening, Thank you. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.